Blog Talk Radio. We are having some technical difficulties over at those guys. Sadly, we had an audio clip playing, and it was playing the loudest it possibly could. However, you didn't hear that, listening audience, and neither did I. But here we are with Arrow's yeah. second season, season finale. Woohoo! Yeah, we don't let problems stop us. We only cry after the show. Oh yeah. When you guys can't hear us. Yeah, when you guys can't hear those guys. Those guys are tearing up. But anyway, so all right, so let's get on to the actual show. So okay, um, what did you like about? The, not even just the season finale. What did you like about the entire season? Since this is like in kind of like just encompassing everything. What did you like about it, Anthony? Well, I really loved what, everything that they incorporated. I'm glad we got to see... Also, um, I would like to add well, one quick question. I'd like, like to say something. In case you don't know who the hell we are, I'm Matt Marrero, the, the host of, of those guys currently, and this is our guest co-host, Anthony San Andres. Hello, Anthony. How you doing? Good. How are you, Matt? I, I'm, I'm doing pretty fine after that fuck-up. Um, but anyway, yeah. so... <laughs> <laughs> so Anthony, so Anthony, how how are you? Um, how, how, so like you were saying, how did you enjoy this last season? I just pretty much loved everything that they threw into it and how it all kind of came together in the end. Because I was kind of worried about like they were taking on Slade, they were taking on Red Arrow, becoming Arsenal for a bit. They were right. taking on Nissa Al Ghul, and I'm glad that they all in the season finale just came together in a really cohesive way. Yes. And I just think that out of the entire season, even the whole series technically, the highlight for me was actually Slade and Deathstroke. I don't know about you, but I love the oh, way his most, character came along. And the actor definitely. is just dead on for me. Oh, yeah. I mean, honestly, I will have to say, I I would have been a lot happier if, um, you know, if we had, um, you know, Ron Perlman be Slade. Mm. I'm going to be completely honest. That would have been gorgeous. But hey, you know, not every dream can become a reality. And so, and we had, you know, and we had a very good actor, by the way. He was great, like you said, he was great at Slade. I, you know, I think it is a bit, like, weird how it feels as if Slade is only tied into Arrow. Mm -hmm. You know, where it's just, but, I mean, again, as we have, you know, as we have an expanding universe, we can easily have, you know, I mean, different, you know, uh, little things here and there. You know, like, let's say Slade can appear now in, in, in the new Flash. Hey, new Flash. Um... You know, he can even appear in a cameo in a movie or something like that. We're, we're, you know, we're, we're making an expanded universe, and it's just very interesting to see where we can go from here. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they were smart, because I was extremely worried, as, I'm, I'm, as I can see you were as well, uh, we were worried that they were, they were not going to care, because sadly we've dealt with some movies recently that don't really care about having an expanded universe and kind of just enjoy, you know, killing off some of their villains before, you know, before the second movie. And immediately right there, it really hinders your universe from really expanding. You yeah, know, I mean, exactly. you, look at, you look at some movies, even though I love, you know, um, two out of three parts of the Spider-Man Raimi trilogy, I, you know, enjoy, you know, bits and pieces a lot about the Batman, you know, Nolan trilogy. Still, they, they killed off certain people that would just, you know, to not benefit their universe at all. Exactly, like you in know, the Raimi yeah. films, they left one villain alive. And that was yeah. Sandman. Everyone else yeah. died right away. And, and it's and it's yes, and it's funny because we're not even saying that you know like uh, Raimi, Raimi, whichever one, right? Flip a coin. We're not saying that he should have you know kept them alive, thinking one day there will be an adventure. No, obviously, like that's not going through his head. But sadly, when you kill off, even though it did fit great with the tone of the movie, I will admit, when you kill off Norman Osborn, that means the Green Goblin's dead, sort of enough. You know, at least the way they did it in the third movie, Green Goblin's dead, and technically Hobgoblin is too, because we don't know what the hell that was in the third movie. But, um, yeah, so it just, it's really hard to come back from things like that, especially when Norman Osborn does so much in the universe. I mean, heck, you know, it could have been a thing where, you know, he, he could have kept it a secret from each other or something. He could have been quote-unquote cured, but then not really. There's so many little things that could have, you know. But anyway, point being, you kill someone off like that, you're killing off what could be a legacy in future movies. Right? Exactly. Same thing with Ra's al Ghul. Especially with Ra's al Ghul. Considering it was Liam Ra's Neeson. Al Ghul. I mean, yeah. not to mention Ra's al Ghul, it's Liam Neeson. You don't just kill off Liam Neeson, especially when he's playing a villain. Yeah. You just don't. I mean, he came back technically in Dark Knight no, Rises, but... He came back as a ghost, but not really. 
Over and out. I was an illusion. <laughs> yeah, right? Just, <laughs> you're going crazy. Just like, just Goofy's right behind him. Well, you are, gosh. Oh, yuck. It's like, it's like <laughs> I think Bruce might be going a bit nuts here. I don't think that's, his, I don't think that's actually Ra's Al Ghul's ghost. But, uh, but yeah, so th- this entire rant just couples down to, you know, you, you, you're killing off these people. That's bad. And I'm really happy that they're smart about it, where they realize that one day, with, that, with this actor or even without him, which it can be fine if it's without, honestly. I'm okay with changing actors as long as we keep the continuity going. Um, you know, w- one day, you, don't, you might not have, you know, Slade and Arrow. You might have him in The Flash. You might have him in a random Batman movie, just as, like, you know, a little mini, not, I don't say mini villain, but because, you know, sadly, uh, is the, is the Mi- Mira Kuru the miracle? I can't believe they actually called it Mira. That was my <laughs> one complaint, actually, a huge complaint. Just, it's like, just call it the miracle, the miracle it, drug. Exactly. No, it's just, it has to be, it's like it has to be the, the Japanese pronunciation. Oh, it's terrible. I mean, I know technically the show Death Note did that with Kira, because technically, I don't know if you know this, Anthony, Kira is just them saying killer, it, but with that accent. Oh. So in Death Note, when they were like, oh, light is Kira, right? That was just mm-hmm. them talking with that. But at least that's a Japanese show, and Kira was everywhere with the K-I-R-A thing, so that's fine. But this is an American show. I just felt, I don't know why I felt like it was racist, where it's like, it's the Mirakuru. Yeah. The Mirakuru. The Mirakuru. Exactly. It wasn't really necessary. No, it wasn't. But anyway, <laughs> so, but, but the Mirakuru, quote unquote, drug, that wasn't, that was taken out of Slade's body, or wasn't it? I actually, it, was, it is, well, it was, the correct? Thing. Technically, okay. he injected him with the cure. That's what I thought. the thing is, we never got confirmation that it did work on him. Right, so, okay, because so even though, I will admit, I'm not, I, I, I'm not saying that I want him to be able to trip the Flash or anything. Cough, cough. But what I am <laughs> saying is that it would be nice if he can go up against super-powered individuals because it would make sense to where it's just, oh, he isn't just, you know, like Hawkeye or, like, you know, he isn't just a guy who's like, oh, I am good at certain things. No, it's, hey, I'm so good because I've been injected with some, you know, miracle-enhancing drug. That I'm super powered, essentially. Because yeah. that would work if, let's say, he appeared in Flash. Or if Arrow gets a bit better, where he kind of starts to break that whole, all right, you're kind of human, but you also have really cool gadgets, and you're getting so good at this that you're kind of getting superhuman. Exactly. And I mean, there's also the factor that, let's say the cure did, in fact, work. In the right. end, can we do spoilers, or are we waiting for a half hour thing? Um, no, because it's okay. Usually I would care. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, like, let's say with a movie, right? But, I mean, this aired on Wednesday. So I would right, like cool. to say, star- if, anyone, if anyone is worried about spoilers. Um, also, wait a minute. We just talked about Slade. Sl- we just said Slade didn't die. I'm pretty sure that's right, a spoiler. Yeah, okay. so it's just I'm spoiler pretty sure that's a point. spoiler. <laughs> yeah. If you, if, okay. if, you were, if you sat here and thought, oh, Slade didn't die. It's Saturday. It aired on Wednesday. I even caught it late for this podcast. I'm sorry people listening. I'm so sorry. Okay, so spoilers are gone. Yeah. Okay, so, spoilers are after. <laughs> yeah, so let's say that the cure did in fact work and he got rid of the right. mirror crew in his system. He right. trapped him in the end back on the island yeah. where we don't know if there are still mirror crew stored somewhere on that island that Slade could by some chance come across. He could even know about. We had, Or there's also the option that he had it on him somewhere. We have no yeah. idea. <laughs> Just the, for some strange reason, nobody checked his shoe. There was Mirakuru in my shoe. Oh, you're going for the shoe. I was thinking they never thought to remove my eye patch. Oh God! Ah, oh. rather yeah. be. I'd rather. I'd rather them not giving him a cavity search rather than eye patch. That is painful. Oh yeah. That's literally in his brain. That's probably why it hurt. And he probably had those visions. There's nothing, there's nothing, you can eventually conquer the Mirakuru. Slade just had one vial shoved into his brain that he forgot about. Until now. That's, until now, until now. Which he pulls out, he's like, he pulls, he pulls the thing out, he's like, I'm going to fight for good now. <laughs> he Completely just gave cell, himself a lobotomy. He sudden, he's in his cell, he suddenly sees Shadow. Did you forget that you had a vial in your eye patch? Oh my god, you're right. <laughs> yeah, just. Pulls, pulls the vial out. Shadow just like transforms into freaking um, into a Walter. Phoenix. Like oh, okay. it's a Walter. It's a Walter. Just, just <laughs> you look different, Shadow. Yes, I know. 
now let's move. <laughs> like, just, <laughs> like, all right, that's confusing, but hey, that's what happens when you let us write. Uh, but anyway, so I would, but I would still like to say, you know, again, I'm a big fan of what they did. They need to keep on doing that because oh, it's yeah. just, you know, because it, it really opens up. It, does, it doesn't make you think that, you know, this is going, going to end one day because I think that's the biggest issue with, you know, with, um, you know, most of the films and some of the older TV shows, it just made you think, all right, this is going to end and they're never going to continue this again because how can you when you have mm-hmm. so-and-so die or so-and-so get maimed or, or something, right? Um, I would like to say, though, so obviously people know The Flash is a thing. It's coming, right? There was a there was a, um, a little tiny 30-second teaser. 30-second teaser, right? It was about a the, minute and 11 seconds. Well, okay, you know what? You can go to hell. Minute 11 second <laughs> a teaser yes. while, while the episode aired. Then there was an extended trailer. If you haven't seen that yet, definitely check it out. That is amazing, right? Oh, really, man, really it looks good. incredible. Oh, the CGI oh, yeah, looks no. amazing for a CW budget. That too, that too, by the way. I just, I do wish Barry was in the finale, though. Mm-hmm. Because here's the thing. I understand, you know, he's the Flash. He technically could have solved everything. But at the same time, I would have liked him kind of stumbling out of coma Barry. Just... Oh hey, look guys! I'm. It's like oh yeah, don't worry. I'll get over. I'll go over there and get that thing. <sighs> okay, I just ran around the world. I don't know how that happened. Let's go try and fight crime. You know, I would have enjoyed that for some reason because I felt like it would be a nice way to kind of lead him into. Because they didn't give him the pilot in the series. I don't know if you know. They were going to give him an episode pilot, and mm-hmm. they decided not to. Yeah. So they kind of had more time. So they were given the, the you know the, the time to green. So it was really interesting, but it still makes me feel as if. You know, they, um, I don't know, I feel as if him being there would have been nice. Because I think, I, when, I, when you see the giant list of, you know, heroes and anti-heroes and villains and whatever standing there ready to attack, I felt as if Barry was the one missing. Yeah, and I get what you mean. Like, he comes out of the coma, he just like, I wonder how my buddy Oliver's doing. And he gets the star, he's like, what the hell happened here? No, I think it'd be great if they just did a little thing. Even if it was like maybe just a five-second thing. I wonder how he's doing. Immediately as he takes his first step, he's there. Yeah, that would have been pretty cool. He's like, what the... Because I think that's something that's going to be big in uh, The Flash's, you know, first season, as as we've seen from some of the trailers, where I do feel as if... What confuses me a lot is how the guy who died... The preacher who died in The Following is now a scientist in in The Flash. I don't know how he would change jobs like that. I mean, after all, he was a devout, you know, Christian. I don't know why he would just start to take up the book of science, but, you know... I would say I, something, but I, I didn't even catch that in the trailer. <laughs> you didn't even know it was him? No, I never caught that. <laughs> yeah, the first time I saw him, wow. I thought, oh, wow, hi, J.D.'s brother. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> J.D.'s brother does a lot in his spare time, apparently. J.D. shouldn't really not be that ashamed of him. But anyway, so, but, uh, but seriously, though, Barry wasn't there. I understand. I mean, heck, it was packed. There was a lot of stuff in there. And, I mean... I I don't know. I you know what I really think? I think Malcolm though, who was there, was very mm-hmm. underused. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there was just so much. I thought he would just team up with Oliver and it'd be a thing where it's like, all right, your enemy, uh, you know, you know, uh, enemy enemy friend, right? And it's just like, well, but you know, and then eventually, because obviously he's going to play a big role in season three. Oh yeah. I mean, we saw from the ending, he's taking, you know, he's taking Thea. Um, he's going to. I don't know what the hell he's even going to do with her. Honestly. See, I feel like in season three, it's going to be Malcolm and Thea coming back in, like, the mid-season finale that they're going to do. Yes. I feel like that's going to be their big draw for the second half of season three. Right. Um, oh, so are they doing that this time? They're doing the mid-seasons and stuff? I, mean, I, I know, think they so. Technically, they technically did it this time, too, right? It just wasn't that long. Yeah, this time it was yeah. a lot shorter, but they did more frequent breaks after that. Right, so right. So I'm course. guessing they're going to do it because every show is kind of doing that now. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because it works out very well. I, I think it's nice, ready? Right? Because it's like, it's a nice way to condense your, your, you know, your plots and not make them drag on too long. It just becomes a bit ups, uh, upsetting only when they only sell a DVD. So, like, I, I see it. So it's like, oh, here is season, you know, here or technically series six of Doctor Who or something, right? And you're like, oh, cool, series six of Doctor Who. And then immediately, just like a really crazy mid-season finale. It's like, I've been dead the whole time, but no. Exactly. Oh, I waited six months for this bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But uh, so yeah, so I, it'll be weird in rewatching. But I mean, I think it's a nice concept. You know, I don't know how it'll work in Arrow because I, you know, again, I, I don't know. Then what would be the? Because the thing is, I feel like they would be the focus for the entire season. You know, I'm wondering, you know, who's going to be the focus for the first eleven episodes? I mean, technically, you know, because Sebastian. I mean, I'm wondering what's going on with them. I mean, you know, he's technically Sebastian dead. Blood? Yeah, he's technically dead, technically, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But, uh, but I use the word technically because we're also talking about a superhero show. But he's exactly. technically dead. So I'm really wondering, you know, what are they... I really can't wait to see who or what they're going to introduce. I mean, the other route they could go is Amanda Waller is still working on the whole Suicide Squad. Right. And in the comics, for one, I forget which team version it was, but I think Deathstroke mm-hmm. was on Suicide Squad. So they could very well <laughs> have her go to the island, break him out, and just be like, you want the Miracle? you got to let this crap with Oliver go, and I will give it to you, and you will join our team, and you will do what I say. And we'll see how long that will actually last, and that could build up to kind of a Suicide Squad thing. Because I think at one point there were talks of doing a Suicide Squad spinoff show. I believe so. What would be? <laughs> she, she implants a bomb into his brain. She she does not listen. She pushes the button. He burps. <laughs> like, well, Amanda, you did a good job there. Good job protecting your country. Where's Superman when you need him? Uh, Way to give him the Mirakuru first. Yeah, right? Just So, wait a minute, Amanda. You gave him the Mirakuru, and then you asked him to join you? Well, I, I mean, I thought, I thought it was a good idea. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so you're fired. So you're, yeah. so you're fired. Get in... Get in, Amanda. Amanda Waller Sr. is a very heavy set black woman. It's like, yes! <laughs> like, we. Because I think that's one of the things I think I really wanted. I wanted, even though I know current Amanda Waller is skinny, I, I wanted heavy set Amanda Waller. Yeah. You know, I, I think it would have been nice. You know, I mean, not that this Amanda Waller isn't a hard ass, because you can be a hard ass regardless of, you know, how much you weigh. I just really enjoyed that Amanda Waller, I think. So it yeah. would have been nice. Also, the backlash was very bad. I think if anyone remembers the backlash from when they chose... Oh, his, yeah, even I though remember people that. Don't, what I love is people don't know the comics do it, so all people do is they sit there and they go, they're, they're doing it because Hollywood, and they're, they're, they're making the fat woman, you know, skinny. It's like comics already did that. But you don't Numerous understand. times. Yeah, uh, numerous times, yeah. But anyway, jumping to Talia, right, because this is something that I don't know if everyone everyone listening knows. I'm sure many do, but uh, it's kind of funny how you and I didn't know, you being a huge Batman fan. I mean, Oh, what you mean, Nissa? Yeah, I'm sorry. Ah, ha-ha, that is what I was trying to say. Because with Nissa and Talia, um, I assumed at first, and you did, that they couldn't use Talia. So Mm -hmm. So they made up someone named Nissa al Ghul, who is the daughter of, you know, Raz. And that's what we thought they did. Now, we, we, I, I can assume, and I'm sure you can too, that they couldn't use Talia because she'd be yeah. tied into Batman. Not that now they don't have the rights to. It's just that you know, obviously, DC has to. It's just like with comics, right? Uh, when when certain writers go up to DC and they're like, "Hey, could we use so and so?" They'll check off whether they can or not because they'll say, "Oh, so and so is tied up in this event," or "Oh, so and so." So on TV, I assume they went, "Hey, can we use Talia because League of you know League of League of Shadows and everything?" And they were like, "Um, sorry, but no." You know, because, you know, Batman. We don't know if we ever want to make a Batman show. So they don't want to use Talia. Mm-hmm. But, however, I would like to say, Nissa is a real character. She exists. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I was very unaware of this. She oh, so is real. Yeah, and then when you told me, I was real. like, I was like, she, wait, what? Yes, she exists. So, okay, so here's the thing about her. Here's her story. Um, apparently, Roz had a love child. That was born during his travels in Russia in the 19th century. Her name was Nissa. Um, so apparently, you know, like uh, her mom told her like some really cool stories about Roz, and she was like, "I'm gonna find him out. I'm gonna find out who, you know, who I know who my dad is, Roz Agul. But I will find out, you know, his, you know, his um, base of operations and you know and everything. And ah, and she finds him, and you know, she finds her half sister Talia, and you know, like, and it's funny because he actually is impressed with her, so he boots her up to become like, you know kind of like his right hand assistant because Talia kind of like leaves as well and but once Ta- you know after Talia leaves and everything she kind of feels the same way which is weird so she ends up like leaving as well mind you this is so early on this is even before like World War 2 so like you know when when this split happens 
Now, obviously, for us comic book readers, we found out that she existed in August 2003. <laughs> but apparently, according to Comic Book Land, she always has. Read Batman Death and the Maidens. Um, but anyway, so sadly, though, uh, I didn't know you didn't get to read this. Very upsetting. So during World War II, Nissa and her family, they were actually sent to a concentration camp. And her entire family died. And she was rendered infertile by some gruesome Mengele-style experiments. And she even tries to ask Rawls for help, but he refuses. Because he's stating that, while he does not agree with Hitler's ideals, his cause could only be aided by the millions who will be exterminated by Hitler's scheme. So it's just like, no. Like, it's just, it's very, it's just, ah, uh, it's very bad. So when did this happen? Um, apparently, because Death of the Maidens came up, it says her first appearance, well, actually, apparently her first appearance was in Detective Comics 783, was mm-hmm. August 2003. Death of the Maidens actually came out, where are you, Death of the Maidens? Are you not going to tell me when Death of the Maidens came out? Come on. Oh. Well, the matters is that 2003, everybody. Two, again, 2003, <laughs> even though it's like, but, but... But comic book lore, since, you know, since when he first arrived... Doesn't matter. 2003. Whenever well, you think you know things about comics, <laughs> someone comes out and introduces a secret new character that you never knew about. Hello, Amazing Spider-Man, other girl who got bitten by the radioactive spider. <laughs> How's it hanging? How's it hanging? Yeah. Good thing. You're doing good? I haven't heard from you these past 60-something years. Yeah, right? Actually, Peter, it's only been 10. Damn, that sliding timeline is cool. But anyway, um, <laughs> so, uh, when Oliver loved Felicity, quote-unquote, I did not know what was happening. I, I was, I was, because in real time, I sat there thinking, I don't like this. I, I, don't, I don't like it. Uh, he should love her like a little sister, and I don't like that it makes it seem like she's the only one for him, because you can love multiple people. And he's a superhero. Of course he loves multiple women. Um, and all of a sudden, Slade knows. And it's like, oh, hey, look at this, huh? And then they did the twist, and I think everyone <laughs> understands how I felt during that twist, because you know what? They're good. I hate them. They're good. No. It, it's it's like when they did that scene, I'm like, so, some, something's up. I, I don't know what it is, but, yeah. but something's going on, because Oliver, no, that's not going to happen. I don't care how many people <laughs> want this to happen. It's not going to happen. Yeah. So I'm like, I literally, I thought, and I'm, I don't know how the entire internet felt, but, and I don't know if I say, like, Tumblr shipped them. I don't know. But if they did, I just, something inside me went, Tumblr just shat itself. Oh, dude, Tumblr shipped them so hard. Like, all you hear <laughs> is, like, Olicity. I'm like, what? Oh, Olicity? Yeah. That sounds like the name of a really bad band. Oh, I'm aware. And it's funny because I don't know if you watch these, but Stephen Amell does, um... Facebook Q&As every now and then and he says that every single Q&A he gets a question about Olicity for every single oh, one and he's done a good like 10 so far if not more you know what I would have liked I would have liked you know what I would have liked F-E-L-I C-I-T-I Felicity there not bad that's not that just Olicity it's like sounds extremely creepy you know what it sounds like it sounds like Miracle. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 I've taken the Olicity, Oliver, and now I feel as if you two need to be shipped immediately. Just, Minions. just, to Oliver's like, up. Oliver immediately injects him with something else. He's like, now I've been hit with Winchester, oh, Winchester, <laughs> Winchester, Winchester, Dean Love. Oh, God. I was just, <laughs> just I don't understand it. Olicity. Oh, man. I'm not, I'm, but mind you, I'm not, I'm not. Whoever created that, it's clever. It just sounds so weird. I don't know why. My first thought was like, it sounds like an energy drink of some kind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Uh, we have ourselves a caller. I'm going to put him or her on right now. Uh, hello, caller. Hey, man. It's me, Daniel. Hello, Daniel. Hey, man. Hello, Danny. Danny, our yeah. caller. Danny, did you get to see Arrow? Yes, I have. <gasps> you have? Did you? So you saw the season finale? Actually, no, I have to... I, oh, I, I, Daniel! I have to up, but, no, I was... Daniel. I wanted to talk to you... I wanted to talk to you something about that's leading... What, that has to do with Arrow. So. Okay. Then talk... Are you talking about Elicity? Do you want to... 
Do you want to comment on? No, Actually, but, uh, but Owl City. Owl City is a band. No, 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 but not Owl City. Ollie yeah. City. Ollie City. Is that? Yes, we must. We must <laughs> go to the Google later. But anyway, what do you want to ask about okay. Arrow? Um, do you think it's gonna? Uh, um, like how how much do you think it's gonna think the the new show, The Flash, is gonna put, put into it? Oh well, here's the thing. Here's what I'll say. So far from what we've seen from trailers, we do know that the you know we do know that Ollie Arrow is going to appear as a cameo in the Flash. So while we don't yeah. know how we don't know uh, you know how much more you know might go into it, but honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if you know both characters really do get to know each other very well and make you know random brief cameo appearances. Because I mean you know the Flash it's also technically written by the same it's written by the same people, right, Anthony? Uh, yeah, I believe so. And there's another character that was in um, Arrow that's now in Flash. Do you remember those um, two like teenagers that were working with um, yes, the scientists, Star Labs? right? The little yes, yes. yes. I'm assuming one of them, yes. oh, Yeah, one yeah. of them I think is called Vibe in like the new Fifty Two. Oh. So we could see them become heroes at one, one is, point. One that is, vibe is a. One is Vibe and one becomes Killer Frost. Oh, oh yes. wow! I didn't okay. realize that was Killer Frost. Awesome. Yes, good, good, good. So, okay, so that's just even better, is that we have a lot of potential for the new show. So, I mean, little things here and there. I mean, I do think that, I don't think it'll hurt Arrow, but I will think that it will definitely help out the overall continuity for, you know, for DC shows, and in how you could have a Flash movie, or have the Flash in the, in a movie, let's say with Justice League, and have it be perfectly natural. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, no, but um, definitely. So, thank you for calling in, Danny. Thank you for being Thanks one of our it. resident resident callers. And, yeah, so, see Peace. you, man. Thanks, man. All right, and, of course, anyone else who wants to call in, by the way, the number is 718-664-9468. Again, the number is 718-664-9468. We're going to give it at the 630 mark, but, thankfully, Danny beat us to it. Got to us in a flash. Uh, oh. Oh, that fell flat. But... Um, just like the Flash might, if he ever fought, uh, if he ever fought Slade, apparently, because apparently, you know, Deathstroke is now known as the Flash Tripper. Um, definitely, re- if you're confused about our joke, read Identity Crisis. Identity or Infinite? Either way, they're big crises. Identity Crisis. Identity Crisis, where, 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 where Slade discovers, am I? He wonders, am I Deathstroke, or, you know, or am I? Who am I? I f- oh, right. Yes, he runners. Am I Slade or am I Deathstroke? I was actually sitting here thinking, what was he called in Teen Titans? Slade, I didn't know Matt. which joke Slade. you were going for. Slade, <laughs> Matt. Slade. Yeah. Oh, is he Deathstroke or Deadpool? <laughs> uh, I was like, I want to help out, but I don't know which joke he's going for at the time. <laughs> no, but um, but seriously, though. Um, yeah, so I, I don't like, by the way, the suits that the goons had. I mean, even Slade himself, the suit that he had, it felt very... like it, I know, like, Deadpool and... and Deathstroke, they have their, you know, their their moments where it's like, oh, one is parodying the other or whatever. But, yeah. or, you know, but it's still, it's very awkward when it, he, they all, many of them, like, okay, when you had Summer Glau's outfit, by the way, hi, Summer Glau, but when you had mm. Summer Glau's outfit, I was like, um, Lady Pool? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's not a problem with it, but Lady Pool? <laughs> Again, nothing wrong, but that's where we were. So yeah. I was very... So I was very confused. Um, but, yes, yeah, so, I mean, that's the one thing. I think many of them looked – some of them can look cheap, obviously. They're the goons. But even Slade himself kind of looked like a hockey mask. Like, I, I actually somehow managed to enjoy his, his, um, his outfit on the island more than I enjoyed the end result. I, I mean, I'm kind of torn on that. I think what threw the final one for me was just the hockey mask look of it, like you said. I just there was something about it. I kind of wish they'd designed the mask a bit closer to um, how it was in the Arkham Origins video game. It's right. a hard mask, but the thing is, there's none of those like little air tubes on the front, those air yeah. holes or whatever they're called. Slate and it's just breathe. a lot. He has a mirror well, right. yeah, Exactly. It's Slate a lot more sleek, yeah. angular, yeah. and I just think it looks a lot better. This one's kind of blocky. It looked a bit like Sportsmaster to me. Thank you, yes. Slade only needs to breathe once every three months. I mean, he's on the Mirakuru, so, you know. <laughs> Sadly, he hasn't taken any elicity, but, you know, Mirakuru is still just as good, I'm sure. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but seriously, though, you know, when we get to the end, more to the end of, you know, that, that Arrow episode, 
Uh, oh, by the way, speaking of, uh, jumping back to Malcolm Merlin, because I really want to focus on him, because I just thought that he would appear with Oliver. I thought that, at the very least, he'd be taking down more bad guys. But he had so little screen time that I was very, I was very, ups- I was very you know, disheartened. Because when like you have John minutes. Barrowman, yeah, because when you have John Barrowman, you know, and I love him from Doctor Who as, you know, Captain Jack Harkness. So when you see him here, I was thinking, it's, it's him, he's here, he's back again. It's like, how is he not dead? Shut the hell up, he's here! <laughs> right? That's all I was saying. And it's great because, again, you know, it, it's good not to kill off certain characters just for the sake of, you know, uh, who else can they become? Can they become good? Because for all we know, Malcolm Merlin can become a kind of good guy. Not a good, mm-hmm. good guy, but good compared to, you know, like, some, you know, some other people there. Where one day he can fight against Slade. You know, that, that's the kind of good he can become. Because now he has a daughter that he wants to protect. Which exactly. is very interesting. Very. Yeah, yeah so, and there's little things, I mean, hell, even Roy being, you know, um, Red Arrow. Now I wonder where that's going to take this show. Because, you know, eventually, will he want to become his own being, his own entity? You yeah. know, eventually, eventually, will we have, you know, uh, maybe they want to take filming elsewhere for Ollie. You know, but what if he wants to leave Starling City? Now we can e- easily have a Red Arrow show that takes place with the same cast of characters while Ollie is off doing something else. Honestly, even if certain actors change, with the way continuity is working right now, I would be extremely happy if this show lasts until 2034. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And if not this show, then other versions of this show... Just in ways where, because I would one day want to see, you know, I know the, the, the issue with it is where, you know, it looks like Deathstroke is slate is already a bit older, sadly. Mm-hmm. But that, that's the only issue, I think, where it's like he already looks like he's pushing. You know, but I think it might be the facial hair, honestly, because he's not that old. Not at actor. all. He just no, looks I think he's like in his old. 30s. Yeah, he just looks that old. But yeah, I would like uh, you know a twenty year old, uh, twenty years older Slade just doing that whole sitting you know in in a bar in a bounty hunter kind of hangout with Killer Frost and Captain Cold. Just hey, how's it going, guys? Just you know, I, I like that. I like that aspect where it's just there's just a bunch of a supervillain hangout that isn't you know the the, the Legion of Doom. <laughs> Hanging out in the big Darth Vader helmet. Yeah, basically, right. Uh, but it can happen, minus the Legion of Doom. Uh, but things like that can happen. I really think that you know this that this show can go a lot of places because we can have Red Arrow with you know with Arrow. I mean, I'm actually a little upset that we didn't have a Flash Arrow Power Hour. From what you've been telling me, the Flash will air before Supernatural, on which Tuesday. is the weirdest choice. Yeah, because, <laughs> because I mean, there's it. even a free time slot now after Arrow because the Tomorrow People are canceled. Yeah, people said it was a good show. I never watched. That might be the problem. Yeah, uh, same here. I wanted to, though, but I never got the chance to. Again, that may have been the problem. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I think it's very upsetting because, again, there, yeah, there is a, a free slot and everything, and it could be a great lead-in to, you know, I mean, Arrow, uh, yes, Arrow used to be kind of the lead in the supernatural, sort of, but, again, with the way Arrow is, with how big it is, Arrow can be a great lead-in for Flash. Exactly. That's a way to be like, watch Arrow. You're watching Arrow and you're done with it. Hey, so would you like to watch just uh, the Flash show? I mean, it's new. Like, oh, I remember that Flash guy. He was in Arrow. Yeah. You know, I would laugh really hard if they thought they were going to set it up that one would be before or after the other. So, so Arrow ties in immediately with Flash's episode one, except that the Flash episode airs first, and it's like, hey, wait a minute. Look at you. It's like your DC comics. <laughs> huh? If people are confused about that, please understand that at one point recently, one comic was released before another, yet it was a part four in, in, in a story that was part that needed part three left. I want that to be understood by people. Part four came out before part three, everybody. So anyway, uh, now that we had that moment of silence. Uh, so yeah, so uh, when when, you know, Laura's dad... Well, not Laura. Well, technically, Laura's dad, yes. When, when Detective Lance had problems with, uh, you know, he's like, oh, I need Pepto. I knew he was going to die. Oh, he was a goner. And that's what's weird. Yeah, just it was weird. It was like, and then all, it was just like, oh, yeah, I need some pepto this small. It's like, well, I'm going to write up his eulogy <laughs> while I'm writing up my notes. He is dead. And he's not dead yet, but he doesn't seem good at all. 
Not remotely. It's just very, it's just very confusing. I, I assume they were trying to maybe they want to use adrenaline, adrenaline as a kind of thing where it's like, oh, he was just so pumped up that he didn't feel that his ribs were so bruised he would cough up blood in about twenty to thirty minutes. He was pumped up on elicity. Yes, that's what it was. Oh, elicity! Someone get him some wind chest fast. Someone quickly, wind fast. <laughs> Just, so he just he's, he gets up. He's just like, I'm in love with Dean and Sam Winchester being a thing. I like, I'm liking it. <laughs> but yeah, um, one thing by the way, something we actually didn't mention on this podcast. We mentioned on the phone. Uh, I hope that be, okay. So Nissa's here, right? Nissa's here. Talia's, uh, you know, Talia's not. But and she says, I'm the daughter of Ra's al Ghul, which isn't false. She's, you know, like she still is the daughter. But what matters is she talks about Ra's al Ghul in a way that she, she doesn't speak of him as if he is the dead. She only speaks to him as if he is important, which yes. he is. Exactly. He is very important. But, you know, they, like, so I'm hoping in a way that she, you know, uh, she, how do I would, he isn't dead, you know, in this new continuity. Like, I'm hoping this is, they understand, they, they, you know, they, they haven't made reference to it. So there is no real way to know whether or not he's dead or alive. But I'm hoping that they're trying to do this in a way to be a bit open-ended, but then one day, possibly in a new Batman reboot, show that Roz is indeed still alive, and then hopefully either use this, ca- this actress as Nyssa or make reference to her. Mm-hmm. Because I, you know, it would just make me really happy where, you know, it would be nice if, you know, they can have these, these arguments and whatever, or, you know, these... Because, again, Nyssa was, as I mentioned before, was with Roz and then kind of wanted to leave, and he got very upset at her because she wanted to leave and kind of disowned her. So I actually thought that's what they were going to do here, where she wasn't going to take, um, you know, Dinah back with her because it was going to be a whole issue of, oh, no, but, you know, I actually, I actually took these troops for myself. Let's run away together. And, I was, and I, was, yeah. I was hoping that would happen, but sadly it did not. So, Unfortunately. Oh, well, unfortunately. But, but in no way does it make it seem like she's running the league, obviously. She's actually, yeah, she actually has talked about it as if she has to go back to her father. Yeah, she's, she's she's yeah. She hasn't really. I don't think she's said it exactly. Where it's like I have to go back to my dad, but I think she's made things made references, make it seem as if that her dad would be angry. I mean, she even referenced her dad in the season finale when um right. Oh God, I can't remember his first name. Detective Lance was talking to her yes. about taking care of uh, Sarah, and right. she said, "I know what a father's love is. Don't worry about it." I was like, "So I guess Roz is alive still, kind of." Yes, probably. exactly. Yes, yes, yes. What was funny though is I just want to see the two of them meet. Lance I think and, that would be uh, a nice. Ross. Yeah, Lance and Ross. <laughs> just, just you know, like so. I've, I've heard our daughters are, are a thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah. You want to go grab a beer? <laughs> sure. You know, but, sir, what do you do for a living? I'm a cop. Oh, I'm a terrorist. I was cool with the lesbian thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like that would be. You I almost think that would be really nice. Yeah, exactly. Just, and then, here we are. But, uh, so, as a, not as a final, final thing, but it's a final little tiny arrow thing before we move on to a bit more of the Flash. Um, thought we were done with the flashbacks. Yeah, I, I mean, we talked about this before, and I said, I get that they're trying to tell the story with the flashbacks. The problem is, I don't care what that story is, because like you said, there's just no tension because exactly. we know how it's going to work out for most of the characters. Oh, exactly. It's just is you know is Ollie going to kill Slade? It's like, well, I I, I no, <laughs> he's not. Well, what if Slade kills Ollie? I'm ninety five, if not a hundred percent sure that he won't. So I'm going to go with the fact that he won't. But how do you know, Matt? How do you know? Well, I mean, the the, the show. You know, just <laughs> the, the fact that it's a flashback, I think, kind of settles that argument. <laughs> uh, and and that's one of my issues, I think. It's just that we, um, you know, we have, uh, I don't know. It's just, and again, I'm not, I, I would like to say, I said this before to you on the phone, I would say it on the, on the air. It's not an issue of will it be interesting, because I do find it nice that they made a reference to the fact that they met once. We both sh- shook our heads like, like, whoa, like they met, you know, Amanda Waller met Ollie, what? And all of a sudden, it's now we see how they met. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, you know, it's just I don't know. It feels as if it's like, cause he even made reference saying I wasn't always on the island, and it's like, what? So 
little things like that that made us go, oh, I wonder where it's, where it's going. So it's like they obviously knew where they were going. Yeah. Again, though, it's just where is this going to go where it's going to make you think, like, wow, this is relevant. You're like, well, are they going to introduce Talia? Did he meet Talia once and not realize? You know, you know who, who is he going to meet during this either year or this half a year of, of travels, right, via, you know, via us watching it in half a year? That will make us go, these flashbacks are worth it. Does he suddenly get saved by a red and blue blur? Exactly. Just, just I was saying, like, something like that, where it's like, see, that makes sense. That's cool. Little things like that, where it's just, like, you know, it's just, it's just you know, it's like, uh, Oliver, meet Batman. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> little things like that, where it's like, all right, I see where they're going, and I'm okay with this. Yeah. So, oh, Oliver, Oliver, meet an eight-year-old Bruce Wayne. No! No, you know what really would have been awesome, though, if the Dark Knight, uh, if Nolan's trilogy had been in continuity with this? Is if when he gets to Hong Kong with Amanda, he's in the city <laughs> long enough to see that whole sequence from the Dark Knight actually happen? <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> just, just, I don't like that. Like, just immediately, he's like, that looks weird. <laughs> Amanda's like, don't worry about it. That looks very happens, dangerous. I would never happens, do that one day. No, no. She's just like, happens here all the time. Immediately, immediately, it's Pacific Rim. In the background <laughs> Happens here all the time Immediately they're just fighting each other Just freaking Just fighting You know Just fighting a kaiju Just be like that Oliver's like This is a weird place You know <laughs> <laughs> I want to see what's going to happen though I mean they are filming in Hong Kong Which is kind of cool I've been to Hong Kong once so It was pretty cool Oh yeah Yeah So I mean I want to see where I was I was laughing When I saw it I thought wow Really they're doing this Really we're We're doing this Okay Yeah But um by the way, I mean, I, I still want to see where it's going. Because mm-hmm. I think, I just think that, yes, I agree with you. There is no tension. Therefore, why should we care? I mean, when he was on the island, even in the last few episodes of him being on the island, we knew it was, where it was going. So it wasn't that cool. Yeah. I mean, heck, the fact that we already knew that, you know, that Laurel and every, like, you know, everyone was alive, technically. Like, you know, other than, I, I mean, there was, there, was certain, there were certain things here and there that were like, oh, God, you know, who's this and who's... But still, we knew, we knew who was going to be appearing, you know, in any, in any flashback, you know, in the future, in the mm. present. Oh. So, uh, you know, I mean... Oh, no, Tom died. Who's Tom? But he's dead, right? Yeah. If I didn't it's hear like, of oh, Tom already, he was probably going to die. Yeah. He was such a great guy, it's too bad I didn't know him. Yeah, like, that's the thing. It's just like, there was... There was even with the Russian, while well, he was amazing... We oh, always yeah. knew he was going to live, so there was really no, like everything. Every, even though he, it was some, a few things that he said were very nice, it really made me like warm my heart. Where he's like, you know, like you've made friends for life. I was like, yeah. oh, like it's true, like you have, you know. <laughs> but it's a thing where it's like, well, we know that happened. You know, we saw yeah. it before we even knew who the hell you were. In fact, yeah, and I mean, in the flashbacks as a whole, they do work at some points. Like, I mentioned this to you, I love how when he fought Slade, like, for the final fight of the episode, how yeah. it would constantly shift between modern him versus Slade and him versus Slade on the ship. Yes, I thought that, that was, was really cool. But yes. then they went to the whole thing where Sarah gets thrown off the boat again. I'm like, guys, we, we know she's alive. Yeah. This does nothing for me. That's yeah, exactly where it, just, it feels like it's just nonsense filler. So I hope that they really keep it going with, you know, how, how how interesting they can make it, and that this season it won't be nonsense filler. Yeah. You know, because, again, what can he do with Amanda Waller? That would be, you know, that would be interesting. Unless, unless they, they're just, let's make a Justice League of America. <laughs> Before the actual Justice League was ever formed, because that makes sense. Clearly. She's like, we were thinking of making a League of Americans, an American League. How do you feel about that? Let's well, save what this America. We... <laughs> but what if we change the name? Yeah. To Super Friends. She she looks at she looks at her she looks at her schematics. That was like the second on the list. <laughs> She's like, you got it. Right behind Arrow and his amazing friends. <laughs> yes. Just, just <laughs> tune in, true believers, to Arrow and his amazing friends. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> but uh, but I mean, there's so there's a lot of cool things they can you know continuously do. I mean, but talking about Flash, now now we finished Arrow, right? We're done with Arrow. Let's take this last 15 minutes to devote it to Flash. I mean, we've mentioned little things here and there, 
But honestly, I see a lot of hope for this show. Oh yeah, and when they showed like who the main villain, I'm I'm assuming the main villain is going to be right. for the first season, I was like, wow, they're just right away going for Weather Wizard. That's pretty cool. First season? I, I, I'm thinking it's the first episode. It could be the first episode, but I mean the fact that they're actually tackling Weather Wizard that early on is pretty cool. Because I figured well, they would have gone with a more like grounded villain, I guess you could say. Of course. Well, I think I think they're being. I mean, it sucks because it really does. It's a terrible thing because I feel as if this show won't last past the first season. I want mm. it to. I really yeah. do. But I'm really nervous that people have been so accustomed to their gritty, grounded heroes and their gritty, grounded villains that superheroes might actual freaking superheroes <laughs> might cause some people to step back and go, "Whoa, man." The Flash ain't realistic, man. You know? If you were somehow, ma- if you managed to somehow evade Somalian pirates on an island where you met up with the girlfriend that you thought died but wasn't really your girlfriend, and then made friends with another guy, and then got off that island, and somehow mastered archery during all of that, and was also a billionaire, then maybe, like, that could happen, man. <laughs> but having powers that can cause you to go really fast. Dude, too much for me. I'm tuning out. Getting them from mixed chemicals? Nah, man, that's not what I believe. Yeah, I'm not cool with that. I'm just going to stay off of TV till 9 o'clock so I can watch my realistic Supernatural. (laughs) (laughs) America, what are you doing? But yeah, so I'm hoping this show goes really far. You know, Flash, because... But I'm so worried because superheroes. Yeah. And that's what really worries me. But again, I'm hoping that that is what they do because they realize you can do grounded heroes because if you do, the Flash is just going to destroy all of them. I mean, uh, even, again, if, if Slade doesn't have the Mirakuru, you know, he can still put up a fight against Ollie. I think that's what's really cool. Without the Mirakuru, yeah. he can still pull up a damn good fight against Ollie. Flash, not so much. Not a shot. Not a shot. Though I am worried in the ter- in terms of villains... Because the Flash's rogues gallery is kind of difficult to adapt to TV when one of your rogues is a giant gorilla. What I'm, honestly, what I'm hoping, okay, I agree completely. I think they can make the, I think they can, it's weird. I think they can do it, it's just going to be very hard. Mm -hmm. Because I think they can do it, like, if they just, if, it just sucks because I, 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 and I say sucks a lot because it just, it's, it's really getting me on the inside. It's getting past my, it's getting past my radio personality and getting to me in the core because we need to have classes. And these classes could be even on TV where it's like you, you, have a, you have a comic book writer or you have a comic book director. You have someone come up. You can have someone really famous come up and feel like, hello, everyone watching at home. Please understand that what you're watching is related to comic books and don't take it too seriously, Okay. No one could ever be this way, even if we're talking about Batman or Oliver Queen. Thank you, and have a nice day, right? Because, yeah. because well, I admit, I'm not a big fan of, let's say, like, supernatural stuff in Batman, right? Where mm-hmm. it's like, you know, I, I like Batman being more grounded. But if I'm watching Superman, right, if I'm watching The Flash, I know what I'm getting myself into. So they need to, like, I mean, I think what they can do is, since they've, since they've jumped, they've, since they've dabbled a bit into genetically engineering, you know, people and making people be whatever, blah, 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 they could try to possibly do that with apes. That's true. I know it might seem a bit too Planet of the Apes-like, but I mean, <laughs> whatever. You know, I mean, we can see what happens. For all we know, we could, I mean, I, I don't know where they can go with this. I don't know if they want to have, like, a tribe of apes. Maybe I mean, the can, problem with that would just be well, budget-wise, I think. That, too, by the way. I mm-hmm. mean, uh, it's it's terrible, because I'm the kind of guy who thinks, put little bits of CGI on a guy in a gorilla suit. I won't care. I, I Honestly, minus the CGI. Guy in a gorilla suit. My thumbs are up. I'm a fan of tokusatsu, all right? Old school stuff. You know, old school Japanese tokusatsu. I don't give a damn about guys in gorilla suits, all right? But I assume the American public would. Oh, yeah. So... A teensy bit, right? So, Doctor uh, Zayesh, Doctor Zayesh. But, uh, but anyway, I, I don't know. I, um, I, uh, I, I, I just think that they they can do it. Budget wise, you're correct. But I think they can do it. I th- hey, maybe that's a movie villain. Come see our movie. He's fighting gorillas. There you Wait, go. Wait, why aren't you paying? <laughs> why are you paying for our Flash movie? He's fighting gorillas. How is this, thought- how are you not entertained? This is the Flash. I thought this was like Planet of the Apes Seven or something. 
Yeah, Planet of the Apes 7 with The Flash, you know. Uh, <laughs> it'd be nice if they made a Fun of the Apes joke in there. I feel like they would. They, I feel like people would if they were writing that movie. I would. They definitely anyway, would. But anyway, I, I, don't, I think it can happen because what you can try to do is you can try to say, uh, mine is CGI, right, writing-wise. You can say something like, you know, we studied apes, you know, we've, we studied apes, we tried to inject them with really stupid things, we were really stupid people, and then we thought, whatever, let's just throw them back to Africa. Let's abandon them. No one will ever notice, no one will ever care. Well, sadly, <laughs> now we have these humanoid apes running around, and things are kind of getting a bit creepy. Also, what you can do, even though this would look, it wouldn't be the best, you can just, you know, get some people, right, and you can possibly just do the, we're going to make you look apish, but they mm. still be they would still be humanoid. Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, I'm not saying it'd be the best thing to do. You can understand why, and it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be that much of a departure if it was still a thing of, all right, so we kind of tested people with ape DNA and apes with people DNA in Africa, and this is kind of what happened. I mean, you know, <laughs> we used to not be good people. We still really aren't, but we used to really not be. Yeah. <laughs> so used to be and a that, hell of a lot worse. We used to be a hell of a lot worse. Immediately see a giant man bat going. That's one reason. There's actually one little thing right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yes, I, I, I do feel as if there's ways to do it. It would be hard, mm. but it can be done. Yeah. But I agree, though. His 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 rogues gallery is a bit strange. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't know how long this show might last. Yeah. Uh, for all we know, I mean, hey, they could make new... Uh, and I only mean it because, you know, who is he, after he runs out of rogues, who is he going to fight, you know? Exactly. But, I mean, honestly, I, I, they can make more rogues. You know, it can become a thing where they introduce some, some people into the comics via this. They can also... You know, I mean, there's a lot of things they can do. Because, also... Hopefully, if they're smart, which I know they are, they will make it a while before he truly masters his powers. Whenever he thinks he's going to master it, there's one more level. Mm-hmm. Uh, another cool thing I think is them finding out new uh, and you know new and different ways of introducing new flashes or technically old flashes. You know, I would love for them you know to make reference to you know um, to you know a bunch of other people who have donned the suit mm-hmm. personally. You know, yeah, I mean, I mean it'd be know. really cool to see, like, Jay Garrick pop up at one point. I was about to say that. Jay Garrick yeah. would just be great to see him pop up, you know. Yeah. And, and uh, honestly, I would like, even though it would be weird to have it in, you know, TV form, still, you can easily have, you know, um, Barry mention one of his best friends who works at the military. You know, it's like, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, I love, you know. And then just name off a bunch of Green Lanterns. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, how Jordan? And, uh, you know, and so and so. You know. It's like, wait a minute, Barry, what are you doing here? You know? Yeah, and, I mean, at know, one it, point, like, yeah. when you were going on about, like, how he discovers his new powers and all, I actually right. think it'd be pretty cool to have Jay Garrick be the one to kind of help him through that. Yes, because Cur- I-, I actually mentioned this a while ago. I was thinking of it more as a movie, you know, a platform, but it would be great for a show as well. Having, you know, um, The Flash make reference, let's say, Superman and Batman and say things like, you know, like, you know, and, and talk with Jay, with Jay and basically have you know, them do like kind of like a running contest, you know? Because while you would think that the Flash, the current Flash would be faster than, you know, than, um, than Jay because of how old Jay is, at the same time, Jay has been able to master his powers. So they're having a little contest or something, and, you know, and you have Barry say, but, you know, uh, I thought Superman was the first hero. And yeah. Jay could say something like, the first one they saw. And then speeds, and then just, they just have a little running contest through the city. Because currently we've seen that Barry does have little things here and there that he can stop. You know, he can be faster than, you know, anyone, but he doesn't know how to control it. So technically he doesn't have those powers. Mm-hmm. Technically, And if they're smart, they won't give him powers like that, at least to his full potential, for, you know, two to three seasons. Yeah. Because once you give him powers that are like, well, well, well Barry, uh, you are not only able to access the speed for it, you know, you are also able to run so fast that no one can even tell your, it's like, okay... So basically what you're saying is the Flash wins. <laughs> like you might as well replace the actor for Barry and put John Cena in the suit. Because there's no way the Flash is going to lose. <laughs> Pretty much. And that becomes a major... I'm happy I destroyed you. You're just, <laughs> but, uh, but I'm happy... No, but seriously, that becomes a major problem. 
And so, again, so hopefully, I mean, I'm not saying they can't one day say he has the ultimate powers of the Flash, but it, ha- it can't be in the first season. Yeah, I like your idea of putting John Cena, or as we know him, Fred Dad in the suit. That'd be pretty cool to you, see. You know him. No one else knows him <laughs> as Fred Dad. They've all washed that memory out of their brain. Every They've time all... you mention him, I'm going to just bring that up, though. I, just, I despise you. Despise <laughs> you so much. But thank you all for listening. Uh, we're now at the end of our show. Oh. And... Um, Thank you all for listening to our Arrow's second season finale. If you thought our podcast was all over the place, so was this episode. Uh, <laughs> it was, wasn't it? No, I mean, I know you liked it, but, like, you know, like, I, m- I remember even you even said it was, it was a bit lacking. It was a bit something off about it. Yeah. It was so just... we tried to emulate that in our show today. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, I hopefully, did a pretty good hopefully job. it stuck. I, I think we did as well. I think, you know, I think our art imitated art. And it worked I mean, well. we went from we went from Arrow to Fred's dad, so we did pretty good. Uh, we uh, a, a plethora of genres, you little shit. Um, <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> um, but uh, no, but I love Anthony. Anthony loves me. We're not going to kill each other. I need a, I need a guest co-host for whatever I do, comic stuff. Uh, and yeah, I mean, again, thank you guys for listening to those guys. Um, if you want to like our Facebook page, definitely check us out. Those guys on the radio via the URL, or just search up those guys. Definitely throw us at your friends, and I mean literally just possibly uh, take your computer with our homepage on it and just chuck it at them. I don't know if that'll get them to like uh, our Facebook page, but, you know, I mean, we actually should probably not do that. They might put them in the hospital. But but if you add some chemicals in there, they can actually become superheroes. So definitely try and throw some acid after you hit them with the computer. Maybe something. Could be a win-win. Thing. Could be a win-win. Uh, they could also die. But again, you know, no pain, no gain. That's what I always say. So uh, thank you guys for listening to those guys. I am Matt Marrero. And this is Anthony Sinandres. And we are going to sign 